energy. So this energy. is this is mid six early sixties. Yeah, 60s? 64, 65. Right. So this is so so uh, the, the, the British invasion is happening. Happening. Um, and the sort of the Beatles and the Stones and the Kinks and mini skirt. Yeah. Free love. Yeah, so it's I mean, arguably, arguably the most exciting time to be working in music in, in, in the, anywhere in the world. A young man in, in Denmark Street, it was, in, it, was a, it was like being in the Garden of Eden. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you wanted to be a musician. Yeah. And so... Um, and in your, I mean, I mean, I mean, everyone's hanging out together and going to see all these shows. Yep, all that, all that you know, we'll be just really deeply involved in the day-to-day -day business of of, of the record business. In those days, we, we had a very solid relationship with the recording industry. Yeah. Because uh, it was a, it was an ideal situation because record companies in in 1964-65 only signed artists because they were great singers. Yeah. That's why they signed them, and they were marketable. They didn't sign them because they were good writers. There was a whole community of writers, probably 30 or 40 major writing teams working yeah. in, in Britain. Yeah. Uh, Mainly in Denmark Street? Who were, a lot of them were yeah. set, centered in Denmark Street, turning out lots of good material. And there was always, if you wrote a halfway decent song and make a decent demo, there was always a huge number of artists prepared to record it. Record it. Yeah. So we had a very, very good interactive, you know, uh, relationship between the recording community, the writing community, the publishing community, and the management and agency community. Yeah. And they all they all interfaced with each other very well. And you're writing, so you and Doug are, are, are a writing partnership. We became a writing partnership in the end of 1965. And he's he's, he's lyrics. Lyrics. And you you are doing the the music, the, the top line, yep. melodies. Yeah. Um, how, um, how how was that? Had you done that before? So, you know, with a partnership like that, right? Yeah, I tried. I tried with several people, not yeah. really succeeded. Um, it took, well, songwriting teams are rather odd. They're they're most of the successful songwriting teams. There is one dominant partner who is responsible. Who's the arbiter of everything that actually ends up in the song, and it's usually the guy who can sing. Because a lyric is only a lyric if it's subtle. It's not a yeah. lyric, but it's on a page. So um, I was that. I was the arbiter of what went, what finished up on, on our songs. Yeah. Doug supplied lyrics. He was a marvelous writing partner because he was very adaptable and changeable. Came up with very good ideas. And did you have a certain? <coughs> I mean, would you go into a room together and or, or yes. would you? Would you? Would he have a bunch of lyrics that he'd written first, or no. would you? We worked together in a room, right? Always go in and say, right, let's go and for forty-five years we worked in a room together. Well, yeah. things have gone pretty well. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I have to say. Yeah. I mean, it sounds really cheesy, but I don't think we ever really had an argument at yeah. all. It was fantastically good fun. Yeah. Because we were constantly writing songs. Ah, oh, yeah. The, the strike rate for a, a young writer in the 60s was probably, you know, um, 10 successes for a, and 90 failures. Okay, right, that's a one in, uh, one in 10. That, I, I think that's probably pretty average. Right. So how many so, songs are you, uh, you, you know, on a day, a day in the office as it were, how, uh, how many songs are you trying to try In 45 to years we wrote 520 songs. And so, um, of those, 360 were recorded by a lot of people. Yep.